In this lecture, we're going to talk about the movement of electrons in a closed circuit. Now, a closed circuit is simply a cyclical pathway through which our electrons can flow. Now, for example, we can take a long wire, loop it into a circle, tie the two ends off, and we'll form a closed circuit. Now, this closed circuit, or within this closed circuit, our electrons will be able to flow in a cyclical manner from this point and back to that same point. Now, I want to ask the following question. What determines the ability with which our electrons flow in our closed circuit? In other words, what are some factors that will affect or impede our electron flow? So now let's look at the resistance that's created by our closed circuit. To find the resistance, we have to use the following formula. So let's examine our formula. Resistance R, which is given in our units called ohms, represented by a Greek letter omega, is given by multiplying resistivity of atoms given by the Greek letter rho, RHO, multiplied by length of that circuit of our wire, divided by the cross-sectional area of our circuit, of our wire. So let's examine every single guy and see how they affect our total resistance of our circuit. So let's examine resistivity of atoms. This guy changes for different types of atoms and let's see why. Remember that different types of atoms, for example metallic versus non-metallic, will attract electrons with different abilities. In other words, very electronegative atoms, like the halogens, will have high effective nuclear charge, and that means when electrons flow by these types of atoms, they will be deflected from their pathway and will go into orbit, orbiting our proton nucleus. And that's because these types of atoms, atoms with high electronegativities, and high effective nuclear charge will attract electrons very well and they will not allow electrons to flow and that's exactly why we don't make circuits using these types of atoms now let's look at metallic atoms these atoms have low electronegativities and have low effective nuclear charge and that means they don't attract electrons very well so when electrons will flow by these types of atoms they will be undeflected at least to some degree and that's because almost every single atom to some extent attracts our electrons so once again, this row, known as resistivity of atoms, depends on the different types of atoms. If our atoms attract electrons very well, they hold on to electrons very well, that means this row will be high, so our resistance to electron flow will be high. Likewise, if our atoms, our metallic atoms, are good conductors, and they don't hold on to electrons very well, that means our row for those types of atoms will be relatively small. So our resistance due to this guy will be small. Now, let's look at the length. We see that R, or resistance, and length are directly proportional. In other words, if you increase our L, you will increase our resistance. Now let's look at the A. We see that our resistance and our cross-sectional area are inversely proportional. And that means if you increase our cross-sectional area, you will decrease our resistance. And if you decrease our cross-sectional area, you will increase our resistance. So now, let's look at the relationship between resistance and electron flow. So far, we've only spoken about resistance. And now we're going to connect resistance and electron flow. This relationship is known as Ohm's Law. So Ohm's law is a simple formula that allows us to gain more intuition about the way our electrons move in any closed circuit. Now it's given by the following formula. I, or our current of our electron, is equal to voltage, or the electric potential, divided by our resistance of our closed circuit. And it states that if we know our V and R, we know our current. So, we just spoke about resistance, and we said resistance is given by the following formula. So, 
If our atoms that our electric circuit is composed of are very electronegative, if they have high effective nuclear charge, that means electrons will not flow well. And that's exactly what this formula tells us. If our resistance is very high and our V stays the same, that means our I will decrease, and that's because I and R are inversely proportional. Likewise, if our resistance stays the same, we see that I and, R and V are directly proportional. So increasing I will increase V, and increasing V, our voltage, will increase our I. And that's because if we increase our voltage, we increase the potential of our electric field, so electrons will flow quicker and easier from any given point X to any given point Y. Now let's look at the following representation of a closed circuit. Now I'm going to go more into detail about closed circuits in a future lecture. For now we should know that our voltage is represented by two bars, a long bar and a small bar. Long bar is positive, small bar is negative. This squiggly line is our resistance. So electrons will flow from this negative guy to this positive guy. That means our current by convention is the opposite. So current will go from positive to negative. And when electrons pass this little squiggly line, they will slow down. And that's exactly what resistance does. The higher our R, the smaller our I. The higher our V, the larger our I. And that's exactly what Ohm's law does. It gives us a relationship between the current, the voltage, and the resistance.